Hi everybody, Linda Carroll here from my studio, Gather of Great Things, and I wanted to continue on my journey into my junk, world, junk journal world. Um, my last video, I started construction of a junk journal made of junk mail, and if you remember, I sewed in the first signature and I was going to my plans were to use the same holes to sew in the second signature but I really thought about it and slept on it and decided that it probably wouldn't lay open flat if I did that so I went ahead and I used my template and punched another set of holes and sewed my next signature in and it worked out really well you can see the the two signatures stitched in I just used a simple pamphlet stitch and I <clears throat> I did uh, do a do the first page which I'm going to uh, reproduce for you so you can collage along with me if you would like. Um, and I did it ahead of time because I really wanted to see how the colors that I had in mind was going to work and how the ideas that were generated from that uh, Amazon commercial would work out in this particular journal and I was really pleased with um, the way it turned out. Uh, I, I started pooling materials together and I had told you that my paintings that I do had already moved into the direction of using the colors um, that I really really am drawn to now and this is a copy of the painting the, the last painting that I did and all I did was I took a, a photo of it and um, I printed it out on just regular copy paper on my printer now you can use a magazine face um, you can use a face maybe that you have painted or drawn which I think would be great and you can scan it into your computer and print it out or take a photo of it on your phone and print it out but that's what I decided to use and that is what indeed um, told me what colors to bring in and the rest of the piece I pulled some scrapbook paper. Uh, I pulled some old music paper that I had. I pulled an old almanac um, that I have. I pulled some dictionary paper. And this is kind of funny because this I just had on my desk and it has I and so I think I'm going to use that in here. I used um, some, actually this piece was dyed with wine that my uncle had made um, a long time ago. And it had turned to vinegar, but I thought, well, let me see what would happen if I try and dye paper with it. Because I really like the color. And I dyed this over a year ago, and when I first dyed it, it, it had a wonderful smell of kind of wine and vinegar. But now that it's kind of sat around for a year, that's dissipated, and I love the patterns on this. 
um, I pulled a an old uh, ledger that I have um, and we'll use pieces of that in the background. I love working with vintage papers and I also have a doily which I dyed using uh, avocado and it turned this really pr really pretty pastel -y kind of rose color so I also found in my stash um, these roses they were actually from a scrapbook scrapbook uh, paper page but you can go through a gardening magazine or any any kind of magazine and find flowers to use for a headdress and I found these fish and um, they're engravings and I just uh, did a fussy cut around the outside edges and the commercial had a face had a, a smile or a mouth that kind of floated around in the air very surrealistic and I like the surrealistic style so I thought what could be more surreal than fish kind of trying to uh, swim in midair so I've got two of those that I cut out I also found um, some coupons and I pulled a couple different colors to see which ones would work and I liked the way this worked in the background but you could actually use any color uh, coupon and or ticket whichever you want to call it and uh, and I found this odd eye that I had in my stash and I did an, a number of classes with Michael Demang and made assemblages using bits and pieces of found objects. And um, so his work has really influenced my style. I, I like the oddness and the, the surrealness of um, including pieces like this in my work and then the contrast between something that is engraved and then something that's painted in the background um, really really appeals to me also um, because of the virus going around and causing chaos and fear throughout the countries of the world, um, my thoughts are with the people of Italy. My father's family um, is from Italy, originated in Italy, and I found these stamps in my stash. They're reproductions, but to let people of Italy and over the world that I'm thinking of them and hoping that the the fear doesn't overcome their world. I I read an article that the Italians are actually leaning out of their windows since they're on lockdown and can't go out. That they're leaning out of their windows and singing to one another. And what a beautiful way to still connect with each other through music and art. Um, even when they're not allowed to leave their homes. So I'm thinking of, of all of you, and especially, um, I'm sure that I still have family there. I'm, I don't know for sure, but, but I am thinking of you. So I included a, a stamp from Italy. So let's, um, let's go ahead and get started. I used a number of supplies to create the background and I'll show them to you as we move forward. So I'm just going to flip the page over and I'm going to work on this side of the page. And the first thing I'm going to do is I have a piece of parchment paper 
that I'm going to tuck underneath my page so I don't mess up my inside of my cover. And I, I did, let me get my glue book out here. And I just started in the background um, covering the page, basically, with bits and pieces of the vintage papers and some of the scrapbook papers that I had collected. And I just, you know, kind of tore, I didn't cut, I tore these pages, papers, and just started applying them uh, to the background. And I used my glue stick. So, let's uh, do the background first. And I'm probably going to speed this up as I'm, as I'm gluing. So, I'm going to stop talking for a little while and glue away. Okay, <clears throat> one reason that I wasn't really real concerned about the direction of the papers and which papers I was using exactly 
um, is because a lot of this is going to be covered up. If you see in this one, you can see a little bit of the music paper in the background and some of the almanac, but most of it's going to be covered up. It's just a, a background that the first layer that we can start working on um, before we get further into the piece itself. So the next step I did, I took some matte medium, soft gel matte medium, and I coated the entire... Okay, my white paint is dry on my page. And the next thing I did was go in with um, some inks, some pigmented inks, to get this really pretty subtle um, coloring in, in the background. And I used um, this color box ink pad. It's old. It's really old. Um, so the paint is mostly moved up, which or, or ink is mostly used up, which I really like because it's really subtle. But you can use um, pan pastels if you want. Um, you can use any any. You can use distress inks. You can use whatever you want to create the background. But I really liked the kind of pastel-y colors. And I just went in and started rubbing in the background. And I just really like the effect that this gave the background. And I used um, that peachy color and I used this turquoise color and I just, I love the softness of these colors. And let's see, what else did I use? Um, I used, maybe I used the blue too. And I'm just using a really light, light touch on this. Okay, and there's that step of the background. And after I did that, I went in with some paint and I did some dots in the background. I love dots and so these are more like splatters than dots, but I really, really liked uh, the way they looked and I used um, two different colors. I used this um, Turquoise color and it's just inexpensive acrylic paint And I Put it in my palette and I water it down quite a bit Put this over here see if it's ready and then I just I tap on the nope I need a little more water it's not quite tappable yet that should be there we go and this is another reason why your 
parchment paper so important underneath. And then washed out my brush, kind of, and I used this nutmeg brown. And these dry really fast, and you only need a drop of paint. You don't need a lot. And I like these because they kind of spread out as they um, as they dry, which is really kind of neat. You want to thin it out with water, and then just tap your finger on your brush, and you'll get your dots. And that's it. And I'm going to dry those off so I don't end up smearing them. Okay, so after I did that, after my paint is dry, um, I went in with a stamp. And I just use a, a text stamp. You can use really any kind of stamping you want for your background. This one I just had handy because I had been using it. And I used Archival Black ink. My fish got away. my stamp off paper here and you want this settled you don't want it to uh, stand out a lot so I put the ink on it and then just blot it off and then go in and stamp on the page so I don't want it to be super black So I just kind of do this randomly over, over the page. off and now I'm ready to start layering my collage and you need to decide what is farthest in the background to do first so my doily is the farthest thing in the background and what I did to this piece, let's see, the way this is going to have to lay out is, let's see, since she's over on this side of the page now, I think I'm going to have to cut my doily first. And then adhere her down. But when I laid this down on the background, it kind of blended in just a little bit too much for me. I, I wanted a little bit more contrast on the edges. So I went in with my, with my color box 
inks. And I kind of just gently touch them here and there. I like that. And then I, I, I think I went in with a little bit of yellow, but it really doesn't matter. I like the subtle colors. And then I took my Distress Ink. I used Vintage Photo and went around the edges a little bit. Just a little bit, not a lot. I just wanted a hint, that was too much, <laughs> of color on the edges. Okay, I'm going to fold this over so I don't end up with color that I don't want. And then when I laid it down on here, I liked that. I liked the way that grunge look um, happened. And then I put her on top of that, and I really liked that contrasty part. I'm not crazy about that really dark area there, but that's okay. All right, get my glue book back out. It's really a pretty day here today at the beach. Um, so many people are staying in all of our social events have been canceled for the weekend. Every year we have a chili cook-off and a soup cook-off. Um, and that was canceled and they canceled the St. Patrick's Day Parade. They've canceled um, the first get together of the of our local baseball team um, so a lot of people are staying in um, so staying healthy trying to stay healthy I know I went to Walmart yesterday I took my nephew grocery shopping so he could stock up and um, there were there was no toilet paper to be had and it's like nobody ever bought toilet paper before and kept toilet paper in their house I I don't quite understand that and uh, so anyway we're good here, and I hope you are too. I hope it doesn't affect you and your families too much. For some reason, my glasses keep steaming up. I don't really know why. Okay, so we have the doily down. And then the next layer I'm going to do is my my lady. And she is one of my original paintings, as I said. And I just took a picture of her and I uh, downloaded it to my computer and just printed it out on regular uh, copy paper. You can use um, magazine. Most of my journals that I have done before, I just use magazine cutouts of uh, women's faces and arms and so on and so forth. So you can definitely do that.
And I just use a credit card just to make sure I get all my bubbles out. Okay. I think I... Yes. I think I was supposed to. I was put my ticket on before I glued down her shoulder. That's okay. That's still doable. And again, when I put this down, it was just a little bit too one color for me. So I went in with my color box inks. And I kind of distressed it a little bit. I guess you could call it distressed. Using some of the same colors I used in the background. And I also used my finished photo and went around the edges. I just re-inked my vintage photo and I don't like it because it's it's too dark. So anyway. Yeah. I like it when I've almost used it up and and I noticed I didn't notice it when I when I did this yesterday, but I noticed that when I stamped the crow one, I didn't realize it said upon um, underneath. So that was a nice little synchronicity there. I also tried blue coupons, which would have worked. Um, so whatever tickets or coupons you have, I'm sure I'm sure they'll work. So just try out whatever you whatever you have. Okay, then her headdress would go on, and I did tuck the stamp kind of behind her headdress and I think you can either use something like this or you can use I I did um, I did this in a video um, one of my earlier videos I did the postage stamps um, using book pages and portraits. You could use something like that. I kind of like that. I don't necessarily like that one. It's a little bit too bright. And River Sidens. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of like that. But you could use that. I think I'm going to use two. I think I'm going to use this one, and then I'm going to use a, an Italian stamp too. And then my fish will end up going across this way. And, oh dear, where's my eye? Hmm. There it is, hiding too much stuff on my desk. Okay, my eye will go right there. And then I'm going to use a piece of washi tape um, across the bottom. 
Anne Riverside is one of my favorite uh, Southern authors, and she passed away last year. Um, so I did that stamp kind of in commemoration of her and her and her art. I really like that. This is already distressed, so I don't need to do anything with that. Except make sure I have plenty of glue so it'll stick down. I'm always conscientious of edges and where edges meet and what they're doing, how they talk to one another. And, you know, when things overlap, and I overlap all the time, it just gives your piece more depth. Okay, I like that. And I think I might have to clip that so it'll stick for a while and I like this Italy stamp too it's very subtle but I like I don't want to lose that thought in in I just feel for those people being a whole country being in lockdown, I can't imagine. I can't imagine that happening here. Okay, then my headdress will go right here. And I'm going to go, I am going to go around the edges of this with my vintage photo. I'm not going to put any more on there. So I think it's plenty dark. So as I was saying, it's beautiful here today. I might actually go down to the beach for a while. Let that sea salt air flow over me. Okay. Right. Now for my fishes. I think I'm going to put my washi tape on first. And I think I'm going to use this one. The bird in the cage. I can find the end of it kind of representing people staying in oh, I always find I always find a story in my in my collages I just can't help it I look for symbols and the deeper meaning of of the work I do so here's the difference between being a bird in a cage and being free and able to walk around and do your own thing. Fly free. I like that. 
Okay, so I have my I'm gonna put my fish on here. I'm gonna take a look at, at what I did over here. It's kind of different because I it's it was reversed on the page. I had one fish up there in the rose and the other down here. So I have one fish up there. And I had another down here. It was going the opposite direction. I really do like that fish up here. So I think I might have to move the other fish up here. And then my crow who was sitting upon the ticket will go there. I really like that there. Uh, might be too busy. Really kind of like the fish. I guess I guess the fish could be more prominent and be floating along through her headdress. Yeah, I like it up there better than down here. It's just too busy in this area. Once I get the crow in, um, it would be way busy. I do like them. You know, I don't want them one on top of the other. So, when you have um, black and white art like this, um, you can leave it black and white. I kind of like the contrast between the black and white and the color in my in my painting. Or you can go in with Copic markers or water pens or watercolor and color in the, um, let's see, how does that look? I think that'll do. And color in the, the fish or whatever it is you're putting on. And you don't have to use fish. I mean, you can use, um, you can use a mouth like that commercial had. You can use anything that is just a little um, offbeat. Anything that is not not real. Not it couldn't be real. It's kind of surreal or magical or um, I'm I love magical realism and read a lot of books by authors who write using in that genre and uh so it's wouldn't it be nice you know if you could actually see fish fly <laughs> but well maybe not but you can in my collages So the layering is starting to happen. Um, the colors are all working together. I actually like the way this color rose blends right into um, Miss Seiden's dress. Um, I love the way all of the of the colors are kind of working together. I'm gonna go in here, and I should have done this before. Put some. 
glue stick down underneath the washi. Sometimes it tends to lift since that's what it was made for. It's lifting. Okay, and then I'm gonna go do my put my crow in. And I'm using my archival inks. And ink up really well. And I want him to stand on that little line there. There he is. Stamp off paper. Okay. And because I have my the um doily underneath there. Uh, I went in with my Sharpie or this is an art art marker pen and kind of filled it in just a little bit where it overlapped my face and the uh, doily. And so the last piece we have to do is her eye. And I I almost always have a number 23 or a number 5 in my art pieces. And on this piece, the number 23 is right there on the edge of her eye. And I that it stood out just a little bit too much. And I didn't like all this white space around here. So I took my um, my Copic marker and I just went in and carefully filled in the white spaces around here. And I was surprised how well I blended with my colors. And, uh, but I left the eye itself just the black and white and the muscles around the eye. Blue book again. Okay. And that's it. You'd never know it was a piece of junk mail, I don't think. Um, that was how I finished up my, my first page and then my second page. I like it. This one's a little bit brighter. That's okay. So I hope you enjoyed this part of collaging in my journal, my art journal made from junk mail. And the next time we will do this page that flips out and maybe this page too. I like to work in spreads. So I hope you all have a great day or rest of your evening and I wish you many blessings. Goodbye for now.